got an LED light in my Amazon basket at the minute. It's been sitting in there for about three weeks now. I know I need one, that's the most frustrating bit, but with lockdown happening at the minute, I don't need it just yet. It'd be great to have it as a studio light in here, but... <sighs> Darn it! <laughs> Hi, by the way, I've just realised that. <laughs> <laughs> I should be doing a video on something else, not me buying shit on Amazon. And that something else is me giving you some quick fire tips on how to make the most of your GH5 if you're a wedding filmmaker or videographer. So without further ado, let's get that intro rolling and I'll see you in about eight seconds. It's well known that the GH5 is the camera of choice for a lot of wedding videographers out there, and I can see why. However, where the camera excels itself, it also does have its limitations. So what we're gonna go through today is the most valuable tips when shooting with the GH5 at a wedding that I've learned in the last three years as a wedding filmmaker. If I go over something too quickly or you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments below and I'll potentially do a video on that later down the line. We're already edging towards about 100 subscribers, I think. So if you want to help contribute to that and get us to that little target that I've set, then I will be very grateful if you did. Back to this video, I'm going to split it into two different sections. One is all about the recording settings and then the other is all about the camera setup. So let's start with recording settings and number one is to change your shutter to angle rather than speed. In order to do this, jump to the man, hang on, let me turn it on first. Jump into the menu and then onto the top option, which is the manual movie mode. And then on page one, you will see something called SS slash gain operation. And what I'm recommending is choosing angle slash ISO. What this means is that your camera will automatically adjust your shutter speed, shutter speed, automatically adjust your shutter speed in line with the recording frame rate that you're shooting at. With weddings, you might shoot a variety of frame rates throughout the day. When you're in the heat of a moment at a wedding and you're still using your shutter speed rather than angle, you may forget to change your shutter speed as you change your frame rate. And so giving your camera that responsibility using angle that means there's one less thing for you to worry about while you're busy doing everything else. Next up, what I do for the majority of the footage I shoot at a wedding is to shoot at 50 frames a second or 60 if you'd rather convert it to a 24p timeline or if you're in America, for example. To me, wedding videos or films always benefit from having the option to shoot slow motion. So having the option to decrease that speed while still retaining audio is a great bonus to have in your camera. Alternatively, if you do decide to keep your footage in real time and with it being shot at a shutter angle of 180 degrees, which is equivalent to one over 100, your footage still looks fine. It doesn't look too sharp like a lot of the higher shutter speeds would like 250 or 400, etc. One thing I've learned recently with the GH5 is to definitely utilize the fact that it can shoot in 422 10-bit internally. I used to shoot in 8-bit 420. The reason I changed it is because some of the locations that I sometimes have to film in aren't always lit the best. And you might also not have time to set up a light, especially if you're a single shooter. So having that color information of 422 10-bit is almost a great lifeline to have when it comes to salvaging work and fixing those colors in post. Do be careful though, because you need to make sure that your computer or laptop has the processing power and can handle the 10-bit footage to play back smoothly when you're editing. It is also worth mentioning that I still shoot in full HD for my wedding videos at the moment. However, if you like to shoot everything in 4K, then I'd recommend using an Atomos Ninja 5, like what I'm using, so that you can shoot in 4K, 10-bit, 422 at 50p. ISO, low light performance, is one of the limitations with the GH5. So personally, I recommend never going above 2000 ISO, ideally 1600 if you can. At that amount of sensitivity, your camera starts to crumble. Your dynamic range will be affected. Your vibrancy and contrast just doesn't look the same as it would at 800. Now, when it comes to pitch profiles, I very rarely shoot in vlog on this, especially at weddings. Like I said earlier, it's very rare that I get the opportunity to light, I don't know why I'm holding it. It's very rare I get the opportunity to light the couples, maybe while they're getting ready or throughout the day. But in my opinion, vlog only works well when you're able to light the subjects well and you've got time to curate the shot. Don't just assume because you're in a badly lit environment that shooting a vlog will make it a lot easier in post to fix because it will take time, especially if you're new to color grading. Also, when you're shooting flat, camera manufacturers, including Panasonic, recommend that you shoot up to about two stops brighter. However, with the low light limitation on this camera, if that means you have to bump your ISO up to 1600 or 3200, you're probably better off shooting on a natural profile or a Cine Light D profile where you can shoot at 800 ISO and it looks a lot cleaner. X-Teleconvert. Regardless of whether you're shooting in Full HD or 4K, 
X Teleconvert is a great way to give yourself an extra little bit of reach if the lenses that you're using don't give you that originally. However, I personally advise you not to use X Teleconvert if you're shooting at higher ISO, probably 1000 or greater. In full HD, the I think it's 2.7 times crop lets you shoot with no loss of quality. But be aware that if you're already shooting at higher ISO, punching in to 2.7 times the amount will result in noise being a lot more noticeable. Go into your menu, down to the video section, so the second option, then on page three, you'll see something called X Tele Conv, which is short for convert. However, like I said, if you're indoors and you're shooting greater than an ISO of maybe a thousand, I'd try and avoid it if you can. So those are what I think are the most important tips when it comes to your recording settings with the GH5. Now let's talk about the camera setup. If you haven't already, get yourself what's called a focal reducer, such as the Metabone Speed Booster that I've got on now, or the Viltrox EF-M2, which is a cheaper alternative. Products like these can give you a little extra help with the low light performance on this camera. The reduction in the focal perspective naturally gives you an extra stop of light, which is the equivalent of going from 800 ISO down to 400 ISO. The future of Micro Four Thirds is looking a little bit glim. Glim? Glum? Dim? I'm gonna adopt that word now. It's so glim outside. Therefore, owning EF glass, for instance, which is globally recognized as a standard lens mount, even on higher end cameras, and then using a focal reducer and an adapter on a camera such as a GH5 seems like a more worthwhile investment for future proofing the lenses that you're buying. Then we have your choices in focal length. It's getting a lot darker all of a sudden. I'm sorry about the changes in exposure throughout this video, but hopefully with the new light that I've bought, things will start to look a bit more consistent. The furthest this lens will reach as a full frame equivalent is about 50 millimeters. So you won't always get the close-ups that you might want, or if you can't get close enough to your subject, you might not be able to get those close-ups. So what I recommend, and is one of the main reasons why I bought this one in the first place, is to always have a secondary camera with a lens that you can shoot those close-ups with. Then you can choose between having a wide angle shot or a mid shot with GH5, and then opting for a close-up shot with your second camera. Until I bought the S1 that I'm shooting on now, I was constantly switching between the 18 to 35 and my cheap Canon 50 mil. The amount of time and potential moments that I'd lost whilst changing the lens could have been costly. So for weddings, if you can potentially eliminate that risk of losing a really nice moment, then that's a bonus. And finally, utilize the custom functions that you can get with the GH5. On the top of the dial, you can see three options, C1, C2, and C3. Within that, you can set your own video settings or even photo settings to how you want to shoot. I've set these three up very similar to one another with just a few minor adjustments to save me time. For example, C1, I have set to 50p with IBIS or internal body image stabilization turned on. So that's great for when I'm capturing the shot of the bride walking down the aisle. Then once she's reached the end of the aisle, I flip that to C2, which is set to 25p and IBIS turned off, ready for me to shoot the ceremony. And although that's a really minor change, it will save me battery because I've no longer got IBIS turned on throughout the ceremony, but also it'll save me some valuable time. Rather than going into the menu, turning off IBIS, changing it to 25p, the ceremony might have already started. So just being able to go, it's so much easier. That was intense, wasn't it? I always set out for these videos to be really short and then end up just blabbing on. So I, do, I am sorry if it's got really long. As lockdown eases, I will be heading out more than just being glued to my desk. Sooner or later, we will be out in the field, well, not a literal field, or maybe, but we will be testing cameras and equipment outside in the near future. So until next time, ta-ra. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, love. Ta-ra, flower. Never say ta-ra again.